And welcome to An Awful Lot of Running, the unofficial, official Doctor Who podcast, where our guest tonight is the, as Josh Carr put it, the goblin of uh, YouTube. I love that term, <laughs> by the way. But I, 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 I prefer to think of you more as the Lorax, uh, personally. The Lorax? <laughs> yes. Bad. yes. Bad. The Lorax, yeah. uh, the man who is, well, not completely responsible, but mostly responsible for my... Uh, renewed love of doctor who back in 2020 when i hit burnout oh that's lovely that's that's the nicest thing you can hear right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our guest tonight is the incomparable amazingly elusive davis well uh, how are you doing tonight i'm doing good um i'm very cozy i've made up a little pillow fort i've come out of my writing app and now i'm going into the podcasting app so these are really my two modes these days. <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things from the MCU recently has been their fantastic uh, show, which I think is one of my favorite things they've ever done. That being, what if? What if um, the spider had bitten someone else or something? All those crazy things. I used to love reading those. I've absolutely adored what if. Um, I don't, by default, give everything in the Marvel a plus or a positive passing grade, this is a 10 out of 10 TV show for me. It's like Marvel made something for me specifically. They combined all my loves and said, hey, there's actually fewer rules than usual now. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. Right up my street. You know what's so great about What If? It's that perfect nerd feel where we're like, hey guys, like, what, what if this happened? It's like, oh my God, that's amazing. And you just... You have infinite possibilities, which is another premise of the show. And you can just literally churn out as many episodes as you want. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10 is going to be stuff that we want to see because we have those stupid arguments where we're like, oh, no, come on, man. Uh, Hope could totally kick um, Doctor Strange's ass in a fight. My favorite episode, which is What If Zombies? (laughs) <laughs> yes. yeah. some of them some of them are really clever ideas on marvel subversions that reward fan fan knowledge uh, and some of them are just absolutely nonsense which is yeah. just as much fun um the, my favorite of them actually turned out to be what if t'challa was star lord and that's the worst premise mm. of all of them that's a not a clever spin or idea at all if if, if i was pitched that i'd be like no, try again. You're just mashing shit together. <laughs> and it was just excellent. It was really good. Anyone other than Peter Quill would be a better Star Lord. <laughs> 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 be better up. And I think, you know, people just need to enjoy it for what it was. It's like, it's like Big Finish. It's a toy box. Like, you just gotta just enjoy it for what it is, you know? Don't don't think too hard about things. But at the same time, you can think hard about it and you can be like, yeah, this is fucking good. Hmm. Um, what if approaches to storytelling because they are becoming a bit more popular where it's like no canon unbound no timeline we can do whatever we want it is i'm conflicted on it because that's way more fun and you'll get like cocky self-assured cheeky stories which are the ones i hope for but also it tells you there is a canon there is a canon <laughs> we, must, <laughs> we have to admit this is canon these ones are uh catalogued but uh it is a very it is an idea that subscribes to like authorial intent <laughs> series continuity which, yeah it's that it's that double-edged sword isn't it definitely <laughs> I, I like it that for me but at the same time i'm like every story is what if <laughs> every piece of fiction is premeditated on the idea of what if this happened so like i i go in for law and i do go in for continuity but my favourite's a series where it doesn't really matter. The Scooby Doo's and the Doctor Who's. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you. I knew you. Were, I knew you were a Scooby Doo fan. I'm a Scooby Doo scholar. Next year we're getting three different Batman in two different Batman movies. Like I think I think we're past the point where everyone's like, oh, I don't understand it if it's a different actor. Like, mm. come on, guys. Yeah. In some ways, we're post canon as a general audience, and in some ways, we aren't. So the, the fact that multiverse has become uh, a, co- a premise, a word that people actually know, is mad to me. I but guess he- it's so convenient to, to Disney and their shareholders. Exactly. Just cynical, but also true creatively. <laughs> so the question is do you hmm. think if there was a Doctor Who show that was like a Doctor Who what if or Doctor what if, do you think it would work, guys? Hell yes. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, Robin Tandershot, I'm going to let him lead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm generally an optimist. I generally like to stay positive mm-hmm. And, like, it's storytelling. If I think 
any story can be told in such a compelling and interesting way. Like using the examples we just gave of Marvel's What If, all of those episodes, we had funny ones, we had heartbreaking ones, we had awesome ideas. Like, And Doctor Who has some of the most best and most strongest stories out there because they can explore not only different scenarios, but different times, different planets, different historical figures. And you take any of those stories and you turn them on their head. Like one of my favorite episodes of all time is Turn Left. That is a what if in itself. Yeah, and that uh-huh. explores the Excellent. darkest timeline. Yeah. Um, it also would fit Doctor Who just in the fact that an anthology series would match Doctor Who, which is already a near anthology series. It just mm. has different general continuities uh this doctor and this person are traveling together means it 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 can happen whenever but it's going to be around here yeah it's (laughs) it's fairly unrestricted and would suit go anywhere do anything anytime Mm -hmm. philosophy of doctor who exactly yeah I, i i always i always think of doctor who as like a prism and that like the light goes through it and then you can splinter off into all these different ways and all these different ways are the different stories that you can tell you can you can have a a gothic horror you can have a period piece you can have a futuristic you know high concept sci-fi story but it's it all comes from a what if show which was if it was done animated because then you could have you know Mm. you could have the previous doctors come back (laughs) i think an animated classic what if would rather depend on the general public's uh, knowledge of Castro Valva, <laughs> which I, I'm not sure is there. Or just no, no. Episode, are those episodes, are those moments as because the moments have to be clear and culturally recognizable? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Avengers in New York is iconic, we know what happens at the end of Thor Ragnarok, etc. etc. So, uh, Doctor, you might not have that going for it, no. but it would suit animation as i always say the bbc have some sort of rule that says that doctor who cannot be animated by a actual animation team um <clears throat> that was that bitchy was oh that was bitchy <laughs> i mean let's face it big finish have done a sort of doctor who what if uh series Thank in the you. first place anyway with that being doctor who unbound they explored such things like which is i mean one of I mean, I they had a couple stories that were like oh yeah actually i thought about like what if the valley Yard had won um, what if the the doctor believed that the ends justified the means is pretty cool as well. Unbound is a is a funny example because it's clearly been tried and tested. Doctor Who can do what if stories, um, but it's a very short lived range, and it got even during its few lions. Even it's I think there's only about eight different stories. It got pretty distracted in those eights. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, some of them are kind of lose sight of the premise entirely, which is mm. you know not a bad thing per se. But um, I, I think Big Finish might have run out of ideas. I, I get that vibe with the Unbound series. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I, I'd love to see him bring it back now that they've got now that they've got Eccleston, now that they've got a tenant and Trinta Law, who's doing a fantastic job as the mm. Doctor. But uh, you know, we are a discussion-based Doctor Who podcast at our core, and uh, we like to talk about all the weird and wonderful things and. We've all gone away. Uh, Davis uh, wrote a fucking essay, apparently, on uh, all his ideas. And <laughs> we came up just a, yeah, we, came, yeah, premises. we came up with a few premises which we thought it might be nice to talk about, about different things that could form an episode or a story at them being in a Doctor Who What If series. So, right, who wants to go first? And I certainly I certainly want to go before Davis because he is, like I say, he's the Lorax of Who, and I don't want to be fucking like... <laughs> Uh, I've got a question before we start. Whoever does start is: uh, Have we gone for specific events, or have we gone more vague stuff like Unbound did? Unbound is very about what if the Doctor was an evil, nasty man. <laughs> uh, mine are more like what if Doctor Who stole a different car and spearhead from space. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is yeah. That, like I, I want to say cool. yeah, like specific. Like I've gone more specific than just sort of okay. vague. You know, so like fan what, intensive. We're doing yeah. fan writing here. Okay, that's yeah. fine by me. That's fine by me. I've, I've, I've gone a bit both sides of the coin. Cool. I have Would you like to start, Rob? Oh. Um, yeah. I mean, I tell you what. I'll go with what I feel is my strongest idea. This is kind of an idea that I had based on one of my absolute favourite, favourite episodes, which is Dalek. And I just came up with the simple title of Dalek Lives. And this would be a story that is two stories told at the same time. It's a branch story in which, what if A, 
the dialect lived, but then there's two different branches. One where it just goes on a rampage, just destroying the whole of humanity, and you just see its journey. America, Europe, annihilating everything in its path and maybe coming across other Dot 2 characters that we know and how they confront this monster. Like, it's one thing for him to have just murdered all these people in the bunker. But then on the other side of the coin, I thought, what if we, instead of it killing itself, what if it then took on a different light? What if it kind of decided it wanted to make its own path? You're kind of a nature versus nurture story. Yeah. And seeing where it could go, if it could maybe see the journey of good Dalek, could it eventually join Rose and the Doctor in eventual two, could we actually have the Doctor <laughs> eventually be convinced that this thing is not this murder and psychopath? Well, Robin just brought a whole ass, like, great premise for a story. I that was know, just a like, good pitch. <laughs> this, this, is why, this is why he's the fucking author. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> I'm just I'm just the weird guy that just pops up and just says, "Oh yeah, Doctor Who's good." <laughs> the story completely validates the Doctor's point of view. It, from his perspective, that would be the natural extension of the story Dalek in his mm. worst nightmare of what what he thinks will happen. And of course, the other one is, I guess it'd be Rose's point of view of what yeah. Rose thinks can happen. That's excellent. Just great stuff. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I'm just going to fucking chuck these two on side now because <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't talk. I literally, like, I joked before, like, my first was like, what if the Rani? Which, <laughs> 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 what if the fourth Doctor was the one to stop Sarah Jane's wedding in the wedding of Sarah Jane? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's fan service. It's, yeah, it's yeah. fan service. Which, and obviously, you know, it, obviously, it wasn't going to happen in real life anytime soon, was it? But uh, I thought, you know, I always thought, like, why, why are we bound to, you know, the the Doctor that we're watching? You know, why is it, why in the why in the death of the Doctor does it have to be the eleven popping out? There? I know why it has to be, but why mm. do we have to be so linear with the storytelling? With you know, Doctor Who is such a back and forth up and down through time sideways backwards and forwards and i always like to imagine you know doctor who stories like with a different doctor yeah because they operate they operate mm. in different ways it which yeah. is the interesting core of it like uh if you plunk the 12th doctor in midnight he's gone in seconds he doesn't survive that at all <laughs> with three you've got a real archetypal kind of hero trickster i'll have to stop you and i, I know we have a go <laughs> well, actually the problem is that like three cool. would wrap the story up in seconds <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be a two-part would it no so yeah i would absolutely adore four in that just a much more leisurely but oh it depends what four <laughs> More version of thought. You could have a. You could swap out the fourth Doctor at the end of his tenure to the fourth Doctor at the beginning of his tenure. Oh, yeah. How would how would early four handle keep oh, track? Yeah. And... You, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, ignore me. Oh ignore no, me. yeah. I mean that that's a what if in itself, isn't it? You know, it's like mm. I know I know you've said before in the past. The, you know, you could have a multi Doctor crossover with series eight, twelve, series nine, twelve, and series ten, twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really thought through mine in much detail, so hopefully you can help me out with us. Uh, number one is, of course, what if Saxon got a second term? You know what? In the in this in the world that we live in now, he would have as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, this I, I suppose would be he just offed the Doctor. He just offed the Doctor, and he uh, much like the Dalek getting to enact its plans, its bigger plans. Where did it go next? We know the Master was weaponizing Earth as a battleship to take on the rest of the universe. And I just want to see without the Doctor, with him being the last ever Time Lord. How far does he go until he's just bored and tired of it all? There's, he's got the game to play. He killed the Doctor too early, and he clearly regrets it to the point where he's a little bit, well, I was about to say, untethered. More untethered than usual. Um, yeah, would he just self-destruct? That's, that's, that's definitely that's good. I, I, I can only think it'd be a bit like like masterful, I got. <laughs> So, um, following on from um, a conversation we were having with Who Chaser himself, Don, I absolutely love one of his videos in particular, which is Victim of the Cybermen. And that story in itself, if you haven't watched it already, is just so strong and so powerful. Just seeing someone like trapped in their own body and the pain they are under. And that that's terrifying. That's like... I have no mouth and I must scream levels of terrifying. And I thought, well, okay, this type of story exists, but what if that happened to the Doctor? What if during the events of Age of Steel, 
he was like captured and converted and they used him whilst he was still conscious of what was happening to the outside world like take over the other dimensions and the it's just cyber like, leader. yeah damn uh, yeah. What, what if he cheery became, these aren't they yeah. like, <laughs> I, I like stories that deal with different emotions and themes and to put characters out of their comfort zone so we can see them develop even more strongly to really see what they do to a person not just from an outside perspective but an inside perspective oh it's horrifying kind of almost Halloween type story right there mm. I, li- I like that and I suppose you can kind of you know you can draw parallels to spare parts as well because obviously within that you know you have the fifth doctor be- almost one of my being, favorite stories you know, from yeah be- almost being converted and obviously that helps the scythe men be Nightmare and Silver but good Oh yeah! yeah. No. Oh, oh, not Nightmare and Silver, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not let's not mention the child actors, please. Let's let's not let's not be those people. Like, come on. you're you're the one doing it, but <laughs> I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're up. Uh, oh, okay, right, um, right. Davis, do you like Praxius? I love Praxius, but mm, I also same. have a Praxius premise. What's your Praxius premise? Oh, well, it's it's actually what I thought was going to be like the big reveal at the at this sort of like you know the third act uh, that oh, you know you I, have I know this is. you have Who's something which it? is you have something which is you know a virus and a thing which is based on plastic, and why the fuck isn't the nesting consciousness? <laughs> behind it all <laughs> yeah i think um, i'd like to watch the alternative version where that is the case but i don't think i would prefer it that's that's yeah. my two cents that's fair Just, enough i can get I that, love, you know. i don't touch my baby is what i'm saying that's fine that's fine that's fine you know i mean yeah but i, I it, for, for me personally i thought that's the way it was the way it was going to go and like i enjoyed it for what it was you know although it did the ending of it did make me feel like oh well fuck you adric again so <laughs> yeah yeah but, you know. what if right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, what if the uh, what if the doctor actually gave a shit about Adric? Yeah, <laughs> uh, my Praxius one was just what if the doctor contracted Praxius? Um, so like, oh, what if okay. it mutated mid episode? She caught it, and it was more slow, slow acting, meaning that wherever she went next on her travels, she would be spreading it across all the time and space. Oh, oh, that's good. Yeah, plus I like Praxius, so it, it'd give me a sequel yeah. bait. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's again, it's fucking dark, isn't it? But that's it's COVID uh, nineteen. You know, is, is what that? Oh is. yeah, yeah. That, let's let's face it. You know, we, it, we we hadn't even hit a lockdown uh, or anything, or you know, we even really knew what was coming. But it still felt too soon <laughs> when it first came out. Time of good sci-fi. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, I've got two more, and it's up to you after those two rather serious ones. If you want something that's kind of ridiculously awesome premise or something that's kind of just ridiculous for the sake of ridiculous well you know my pick i think (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think i think you know my pick too actually so this is actually one that i have to credit my girlfriend for because i was saying to her oh you know i've got what if as my subject this week and i'm trying to whack my brain for ideas and she's just like what if doctor who counts for cats I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I love it. Like, okay, sure. It now becomes Doctor Mew for what we knew. Is um, everyone a cat, or is the Doctor a cat? I need to know. Even the Daleks are cats, yes. and of course, yes. they'd have to say, "Meow." Oh god, that's a horrible. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, just, like, just oh, say god. "meow" now. <laughs> that's excellent. That's fantastic. <laughs> and then I had far too much fun thinking, like, "Oh my god, well." The twelfth doctor would have to be like grey odor cats, and then they'd all have to have like little costumes as well. It's just like it's they would have completely have ridiculous. Costumes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the the idea of nothing being that different. Like the plot continues on exactly the same, <laughs> but everybody is a cat. What happens to canine? Rather two quite dour, quite sad ones. It's like Pose of cats, you know, everyone's got to be like happy it. with cats. It's my favourite uh, so far, in fact. <laughs> yeah, I, like, you're throwing the fucking winners out there, Robin. <laughs> what if Doctor Who was dead? What if Doctor Who died? What if Doctor Who was a cat? <laughs> All right, next one. Um, I, I'm just going to do my master ones, because they're not very good. <laughs> what if the oh, master no. was put on trial instead, in Trial of a Time Lord, and the Doctor would be his, would be his defendant? Oh, would be his that's... defender, yeah. I like that, though. I like that's that. Real good character 
stuff mm. right there. I like that. Yeah. That's a, that's a big finish waiting to happen right there. I could see it with I could see it with Jeffrey Beavers. <laughs> we can we get a yeah. check and three different masters? Yeah, <laughs> his life and the doctor's trying to find like one good thing that came of all yeah. the masters' horrible <laughs> actions. I think would be really fun and lead to a lot of good character moments. Uh, but, 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 what if Missy stood with the doctor? Obvious, not being yeah. I, I, had that, I, had that, I had that one down as well. But that's that that's a good one. You know, it, just... it's. I, th- I thought I think it sounds cool, but I at least can't come up with what the story is there because I don't yeah. know what Missy adds to the finale. Uh, it'd have to be a different finale, I guess. That could be good. It is just what it is, isn't it? You know, the doctor, the doctor was going to his death, and Missy yeah. knew that he was going to his death, so that kind of undermined the episode, I think. Even mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and, and the last one was, what if the master was terrible at disguises? yeah but you know the B- little play with him <laughs> yeah, the, the, B- the bbc leak when he's going to be uh disguising himself anyway so, <laughs> so yeah it, it still hurts. It sometimes goes along with him and the master never cottons on that he can see right through him uh, yeah that'd be great fun and uh, it, I, it, I, like, I just uh, want to see that stories. episode to be fair yeah, it'd be a comedy episode, of course, but like it oh, yeah. would have a big, big effect on World Enough and Time, mm. Time Flight. <laughs> a lot of these. I was, I was about to say Time it. Flight. Let's face it, Time Flight could do anything. Could have anything to make it better, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> such as ending the episode early. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently they can sense each other anyway. But I guess time yeah. can sense each other if you're wearing a Scooby Doo mask. <laughs> <laughs> let's face it that whole thing just doesn't work anyway because the minute the 12th doctor met missy he should know but obviously they think she's a fucking robot or something for a bit and it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one counts too that one counts yeah. too it's just instantly on her case i don't know <laughs> yeah back to, you. back to you that's that's all i've got um i've just got one more idea it's very much following on from marvel's what if like going back to the original comics as well as I saw that they had like one fantastic comic um, back in the day called Marvel's Werewolf by Night, which was something that I've sort of been reading into during Halloween time. And um, I just thought, you know what? A banger of an episode, which is Tooth and Claw. What if the Doctor (laughs) just ended up being able to become a werewolf and just be him is instead. It a plot? It's just wow, just <laughs> stupid shenanigans. Like, why the hell not? I love, I love werewolves. I love the David Doctor Tennant running around the, the Scottish Highlands. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god! So, so, so the first thing you bring us a fucking winner is that you know what if the, what if Doctor Who was a cat? Now no, what if he was a werewolf? Yeah. And you know what? I'm, I'm there for it, man. You've, you've got me. <laughs> like Jane. <genuinely. laughs> I think Doctor <laughs> Werewolf is the enemy of Doctor Meow. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's the master. I'm not sure. You know, my last one. It's just fucking stupid is just what if seven had actually checked the fucking scanner when arriving in san francisco <laughs> <laughs> oh him with grace riding the motorbike <laughs> oh, <laughs> <at> the <laughs> oh just imagine mccoy kissing <laughs> jack's ones are all like let's let's swap out a doctor and yeah. they all have horrific or hilarious results <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah if if a, if a what if story can't deliver fan wish fulfillment what can mm-hmm. Yeah, right? so that's mm-hmm. that's a great, that's a good premise. Yeah, fun. Um, I'm I'm gonna speed round through mine. Um, sure, go for it. I, I brought, I over prepared for this. What if the Doctor sided with the Silurians, just morally, yeah. just absolutely morally thought they just thought they had the moral high ground. Just that's complete, just a different stance in yeah. that first episode. Totally is, yeah. And I mean, I think he, I think he definitely wouldn't just forgive the break uh, very quickly then either, would he? You know, well, in, in that, that version of events, yeah. because without the Doctor's assistance, I don't think the human side of affairs get that far. Discussions would break down. If anything, maybe there'd be a, a lizard break over on the other end if the Doctor <laughs> can't stop. Oh my God, lizard break! There we go. <laughs> There's the story. fantastic. That's the There's story. The merch. There you go. You get you get season. You know all those seasons with lizard break. I'm fucking. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> what if Earth destroyed the Moon Egg? Going to one of my other favorite episodes. Killed the Moon here. What if Earth made the different decision and Clara went along with it? What would be the ramifications? 
that is a pretty big what if yeah yeah it's got big affecting stakes i was trying to think of like because the obvious one for marvel was what if thanos did the snap differently or what if it got the other 50 percent of the marvel universe i was trying to think mm. what's the doctor who equivalent of a world affecting event I well now we know think it. of that that's a yeah. good one yeah it's good, huh? mm. now we know it's the flux but before that i was thinking yeah no it, it'd have to be the moon disappearing yeah yeah. Mm. I, I, I'm a big fan of the episode as well. I rewatched it. The first time I was like, eh. the second time I watched it, I was like, this is everything I love about Doctor Who right here. This is this is my shit. Like, I love mm-hmm. Kill the Moon, and I'm a big apologist for it as well. Because I'll you know. remember that. If you ever want to come on and do 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 the rounds on Kill the Moon, I'll remember that. Oh. <laughs> This one is kind of fandom denial. It's not. It's not wish fulfillment because I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't feel either way on it. Okay, yeah. cool. It's a bit tr- What if the fugitive doctor lied? Okay. What if it, it's an inversion? It's just. It's not like. Uh, I'm not trying to shit on this story, even though I don't particularly like the story. It, it's more about. What if it's like just a grifter? What if it's just <laughs> part of a con and we've been completely re- like led up the wrong alleyway? I just think it could be fun. It completely recontextualizes the event. It would, yeah, it would certainly be great, just like you say, to like to dash all those expectations and yeah, you know. it's another comedy. It's another comedy. <laughs> 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 what if Sarah Jane Smith was exposed on Bannerman Road? So that is, she's the biggest secret keeper in the world. She is basically a a world force on dealing with aliens, just from her own attic. What mm. if all of her secrets were exposed to the British press? Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's good. I mean, I, I, I'll be I, my mind is very bad anyway. But, uh, that when you said exposed the first time, I was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> what did she do? I was no, like, no, no not my, like, the yeah. alien uh, secrets are out and everyone knows about aliens. And as I'm just got this image of Bannerman Road and her trying to protect all the kids from like swarming journalists mm. and enemies. It, 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 mm. it, it would be the yeah. Spider Man's identity revealed of, of this universe, in my opinion. That's These are really thought provoking ideas. You know, that that, that yeah. could have almost actually worked as an episode, and it could have been one of those things where it's like, I think, I want to say, like, like it's it's, it's a trope that they've done where like you know i i want to say there was a smallville episode i watched back in the day and like a misfits episode where it's like oh what if everything came out and then they went back and made sure that it didn't come out it's uh you know it's you hmm. know it's a literary device which i think definitely could have well, worked it's a tried show. and tested trope you know, I, i've known yeah no but yeah, the sarah jane crew in particular i really want to see that because they are kids and when yeah. we put the sarah jane crew in dangerous adult situations which they did every now and then, that's when the show really shined. What if the Doctor was instead exiled to Mars? This is another classic one. Instead of being exiled to Earth during the past three years, the Time Lords decide, send him to Mars. And instead, he builds up a kinship with the Ice Warriors. Oh, so, yes. So, uh, an Ice Warrior break? <laughs> <laughs> an Ice Warrior we're, break. We're, we're, just, we're just getting all the, all the fucking variants now. <laughs> we found our patterns. We found our patterns. Yeah, this is what we want. Robin's yeah. turning everyone into animals or killing the Doctor. You're swapping yeah. all the <laughs> around, and I'm yeah. coming up with alien brigadiers. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's our general script. I, I, can't, I can't wait for that broke cannon about the alien brigadiers. That'll be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one's actually coming up. Um, this is in another in a new broke canon. I feel like a lot of my ideas are either potential broke canon segments or stories that Rasson Productions is going to end up making, or some of them he is currently making, such as what if the Doctor intervened against the four five six? Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's writing it right oh, now. Oh, that's that's a um, scoop right there. That is. Yeah, that's the scoop. Yeah. Mine is, of course. Uh, what if Rose never met the Doctor? And um, that mm. is, in fact, if I can spoil it for you, that's how you get Parallel Earth as it's seen in Series 2. Instead, maybe he picks up Jabe, and we get to see how the Doctor existed in this Parallel Earth. What Did this Parallel Earth have a Doctor? Probably not, because if you go through the events of Series 1 without Rose, mine isn't going to come out alive. Mm. So just no. in time for Series 2, we can find out where, what happened to that Doctor. Yeah. Oh. I, I'd really be up for that. Like yeah. I love Turn Left and that like there sounds like a very similar premise. And I just it is. I wanna, oh, it's the night of the squad on Turn Left, yeah. Turn, mm-hmm. turn, yeah. turn left. Right I, I want to see that so badly. <laughs> Russell beat us all already. You already wrote yeah. Turn Left, which is the Ru- best. Let's face one. it, let's face it. <laughs> Russell beats us to everything. Like, you know. Yeah. What if Earth used the Osterhagen key? 
The Osterhagen key, of course, being the planet-splitting device from Journey's End that would have stopped the Daleks' plan of making that reality bomb by taking Earth out of the equation. The Daleks just have their plan blow up in their face, but they still have a full army of Daleks. And uh, there was cut content from Journey's End, from that two-parter, that would have had the Shadow Proclamation creating an actual battle fleet. The cloned Doctor was going to lead the Shadow Proclamation army against the Daleks. And this is a way just to get let that idea seed the sun. Earth is completely out of the picture. We've got our companions. We've got the children of time still on the station, completely destroyed, like emotionally. Um, mm. But in, in's coming another doctor with another battle flu. It's probably not a happy ending, that one. No, and it's, we, you know, especially with the, what they call the meta crisis doctor, which, are, you know, like that's that could really, really lean into that time of victorious uh, narrative as well. Because mm. my God, what if the Doctor led the Daleks? That's of course the three Daleks from Evil of the Daleks, the little ones with the human factor. So what if the Doctor played father to Alpha, Omega, and Beta, who are like these cute little adolescent Daleks who are absolutely adorable? Mm. What if he just made a good little d- unit force of Daleks and made the world a better place using them? How could he make a positive impact on Dalek society? And then a good example of nature versus nurture. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, but it's an inferior version of your one. <laughs> you oh, know, it's gosh. No, it's, it's cool. What if Graham got revenge against Zim Shaw? What if he oh. made that decision? Oh, I'm seeing, yeah, Jack likes it. <laughs> it would give me something to like in that battle of fuck, oh, whatever ranch it is. dressing, <laughs> battle of ranch yeah. dressing. Yeah. <laughs> What if he makes the polar opposite decision and he can't travel with the doctor anymore? Just it it wouldn't have a long reaching ramifications, but I guess it'd have to be a character piece, mm. which is not a problem at all. No, I, lo- I love a character piece. What if Barusa picked five different doctors in the game of Rassilon? So the five doctors, I'm not sure. I did is. Is everyone here aware of the plot of the Five Doctors? Uh, I'm aware. Uh, I'm not sure about you, Robin, but I've I've heard of it. I have not uh, indulged in it just yet. A character abducts five the first five Doctors to participate in a well, in a death battle. Well, three and a half, three and a half Doctors who ever <laughs> bothered to show up or um, you know could talking about <laughs> dead people uh, mm. getting grim again. Well, that one wouldn't even be a different version of events. It would just fun variety hour which is what five doctors already is by the way yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's all it's all i want for the 60th as well really that's just what that's what i want it's the like it's those five back but it's not going to happen so. it's five doctors again just yeah. with, with just, just give me just give whoever me five show up again. again yeah exactly yeah go for it it's you know? just david tennant david tennant in a wig and peter capaldi <laughs> <over voice memo. laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway uh baby what if the doctor used the key to time Another classic one there. Again, it's similar to other ones that we've mentioned already, so I, don't, I won't go into it. What if the silence didn't ki- kidnap Amy and instead kidnapped Susan Foreman? Ooh. His grand. I, I see Jack likes that one. I like that one. I like that one a lot because I'm all for bringing Susan back. Like all the time, I'm just like, bring Susan back. Literally every day, I go and I, I, I pray to my uh, you know, <laughs> Caroline Ford uh, shrine and I'm just like, Dude, bring Susan back, bring Susan back. I, I do my mantra as well. I do my daily rituals for her. Um, I, I, you got to do it before it's too late. Again, that one's not even being grim. That one's being very, very, really quite realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, of course, you would have to change the silence's plan. No more impregnation, child snatching stuff because it will be the doctor's granddaughter and then <laughs> gets a bit incestuous if you really I mean, think I'm... about it for too long. <laughs> yeah. So, so it will just be a standard kidnapping in this story. Sure. Um, where I guess, hey, maybe Hell is even a different Doctor. Maybe we get the the demons run of the first Doctor. What allies would he pick up from across his travels? Oh, no. That you know, fuck. You just remind me of one that I had. Which, what if in a good man goes to war, the Doctor gets Frobisher? <laughs> oh, oh my god like, <laughs> well he was there he was there in fairness he just looked like a Santaran at the time yeah that's what it was yeah oh <laughs> yeah I mean that, that in itself is what I want I, I've wanted Strax as a proper companion for years so <laughs> oh. well, last of all what if the Doctor didn't fall to Sheffield just fell slightly left of centre 
and met a completely different crew of people. I mean, and I just you get to do series eleven again, however you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I personally, as someone, and I, I try to be positive about it, but all the same. And I, 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 apo- I apologize, Chipnall fans, but you know, We're getting some Chipnall but, slander in the in the yeah. pod tonight. Hey, 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 guys! I, I like, I like, I like Flux so far. I'll say that much, okay? I like, I really like Flux, so I can say this now. In it was a safe space, okay? Um, to be honest, anything would be better for Series Eleven. With a, you know, just I just find it a lot better if there were different characters. Genuinely, that's, that's fair. Well, well, with this, you could really push the parameters of who can even be a companion. Just really go for some oddballs, some real wackos who should never be on a time space machine. I mean, that that be that be better than just bland. Let's face it. So possibly. Um, but anyway, like I say, thank you, Davis, so much. Robin, thank you. I will say goodbye to you all now. We have been an awful lot of running. And this has been the unofficial official Doctor Who podcast. Goodbye, everyone. Woo! Bye.